Hi everyone, I'm FlagonHG, and this is the video of my attempts at a hardcore nuzlocke of Pokemon Fire Red using only bug type Pokemon. To see what I define as hardcore nuzlocke rules, check out the description below. But in short, no items in battle, no overleveling past the gym leader's ace before the start of the battle, and we're playing on set mode. Let's cut to the chase. The bug type is easily the worst type in Pokemon, by a long shot. Granted, Game Freak has made significant improvements to the bug type over the years by introducing some powerful bug types like Scolipede, Escavalier, Vicavolt, and Volcarona, as well as giving bug types better moves like U-Turn, Bug Buzz, X-Scissors, and Quiver Dance. But back in the days of Fire Red and Leaf Green, the bug type had none of that. It was truly an abysmal type. There were exactly six fully evolved bug types in the game. Scyther is easily the best bug type when considering base stats, but it also only has Wing Attack and Aerial Ace as flying stab moves, and doesn't learn a single bug type attack except for the wildly useless Fury Cutter with 10 base power all the way at level 46. Swarm was a really great ability to give Scyther, huh? Well, I guess it does learn Silver Wind by Egg Move, not that that matters much for this challenge, but it is better than Pinsir, who only learns one stab move, which is Fury Cutter, by Emerald Move Tutor. But Pinsir is also a Leaf Green exclusive, so we can't use it for this challenge. Fortunately, Parasect can at least learn Spore, and with Compound Eyes on Butterfree, Sleep Powder is 97.5% accurate. So it's not totally hopeless. Just as a quick reminder before we start, I play with Species Claws, so I'll be able to reroll encounters until I get a unique encounter, but I can only use one of each unique evolution line. Okay, let's see how this goes. I start the game by choosing my starter, none of which are bug types, but my choice here does determine not only which starter my rival Birdman will use, but many of his other Pokémon as well. Our rival will always have a Water type, a Fire type, and a Grass type on his team. I decide to take Squirtle so that my rival will have Venusaur, Gyarados, and Arcanine. That's not amazing since he'll have two Pokémon with Intimidate, but this way our rival will only have a fully evolved Arcanine during the final champion fight. Before that, it's just a Growlithe, which I figure is a lot easier to deal with than Charizard on three separate occasions. I guess we'll see. Anyways, an old man stops me in Viridian City to show me how to catch a Pokémon. All he does is throw a single Pokéball and the Pokémon gets caught. I'm a little skeptical that this strategy will work, but this old man certainly can't be wrong, right? So, Notbug and I encounter a Caterpie on Route 2, and we try the old man's strategy. I lob a Pokéball and... It worked! Okay, cool. I name Caterpie Syntax, and then Notbug goes into the box. We will be using Notbug for Surf later though, since bugs can't swim. From here, I have to carefully level up Syntax against Wild Rattata and Pidgey on Route 1. This is pretty tedious, and also very risky, because a poorly timed critical hit from a high-leveled wild Pokémon means that Syntax will just die. So I have to run away from a lot of Pokémon, and I have to heal a lot. But this actually doesn't take quite as long as I thought it would. A few levels later, and Syntax evolves into Metapod. And then a few levels after that, Syntax evolves into his final form, Butterfree. So after that, we head into Viridian Forest and find a Weedle. The old man showed me exactly what to do for this one. Throw a Pokeball. Well, that didn't work. Okay, let's try again. You know, maybe this old man wasn't as wise as I thought. Or maybe third time is the charm. We throw another ball. Got him. Never doubt the old man. I name our newly caught Weedle Logic. And then after some switch training, Logic evolves into Kakuna and then Beedrill. So after clearing through Viridian Forest, we make it to Pewter City, where the first gym challenge awaits. Brock has two rock types, which are scary in theory, but in practice his Geodude doesn't actually know a rock type move, and his Onyx is an Onyx, so it sucks. With a little bit of luck, we can win this easily. Brock leads with Geodude, and I lead with Logic. Logic hits a Poison Sting, which immediately poisons the Geodude, as it hits back with a Tackle. From here, I just whittle it down with a few more Poison Stings, as Geodude continues to do some soft damage with Tackle. It is outpacing us damage-wise, but that's okay. After a few turns, I switch to Syntax, as Geodude starts going for Defense Curl. Then, I use Harden for a few turns, as Geodude slowly succumbs to Poison Damage, while still using Defense Curl. He does fire off a soft Tackle, but Harden means that it doesn't do much. Once Geodude dies to poison, we gain enough experience points to level up to level 15, which is allowed according to my rules since the level cap ends at the start of the gym battle. This is also incredibly useful for this fight because Syntax now learns Sleep Powder. So when Onyx comes out, Syntax puts it to sleep with Sleep Powder. Then he starts firing off Confusions. 
Onyx does get a one turn sleep here, which is always the downside of relying on sleep, but he just misses a rock tomb, so we put it back to sleep on the next turn. Then we hit another confusion, and Onyx gets a second one turn sleep, this time connecting with rock tomb. This lowers our speed, so Onyx outspeeds on the next turn, but it just uses tackle for whatever reason, so one more confusion finishes it off. Good game, Brock. After this, we get our third encounter from Mount Moon, a Paris. It's another easy catch using the old man method, and so Semantic joins the team. Once we get to Cerulean City, we need to complete the first of many very irritating fights against our rival Birdman. He leads his Pidgeotto, which is super annoying for us to deal with. I put him to sleep with Sleep Powder, and then start going for Confusion, which only does good damage because it crits. Another non-crit leaves Pidgeotto in the red, but thankfully it just sleeps. So one more Confusion knocks it out. Rattata comes out next, so I put it to sleep with Sleep Powder, and then I use Confusion. Not much else I can do to be honest. After the Rattata goes down, Abra comes out. Before switching out, I decide to be cheeky and hit it with a Poison Powder, forgetting that his Synchronize ability will also poison me. Oh well. I switch to Semantic, who knocks Abra out with a few scratches and some poison damage, as it just uses its only move, which is Teleport. Last is Bulbasaur, but we just scratch at it until it dies. It takes forever because Semantic kinda sucks, but eventually he gets the job done, while also avoiding like half of Bulbasaur's moves. Well done, Semantic. After getting to the level cap, it's time to take on Misty. She leads Staryu, and as you might expect, I lead Syntax, who immediately puts the Staryu to sleep. Then I hit the Staryu with a few confusions. Misty heals once Staryu falls into the red, but since healing doesn't burn a sleep turn, Staryu manages to stay asleep as we hit a few more confusions to knock it out. Last for Misty is Starmie. So I go for a sleep powder, but Starmie outspeeds and hits a strong water pulse first, which confuses Syntax, who then hurts himself in confusion. I switch to Semantic on a water pulse. Then Starmie hits a swift, which doesn't do much, and I retaliate with a leech life, though I definitely should have just gone for a stun spore. Now I'm at risk to a critical hit, so I switch to Logic, and Starmie actually does get the critical hit. I assume I'm dead to a Water Pulse here, meaning that I'm pretty much screwed. I first switch to Semantic, who tanks a Water Pulse, and then I switch to Syntax, hoping for... I, I don't really know. But Starmie just hits a Water Pulse, and then on the next turn, she hits another one, which knocks out Syntax. So I bring out Logic again, assuming that this is a wipe but Logic manages to hang on from a Water Pulse with 3 HP, letting her retaliate with a Twin Needle for the knockout. That means that had I just stayed in, I probably would have won this battle deathless. But sadly, I just underestimated Logic. Without Butterfree, I know the rest of this game is going to be nearly impossible, so I decide to just reset here. Nothing much different happens in Attempt 2, and I'm able to make it back to Misty fairly quickly. And this time, I have a better plan. It starts the same though. Sleep Powder on the Staryu from Syntax, who is now female. She's also modest, so she hits a Confusion for a good chunk of damage on the next turn. Then I switch to Logic as Staryu stays asleep. So a Twin Needle knocks out Staryu. Then it's Starmie. They outspeed with Water Pulse and hit another critical hit Water Pulse, but since we have Logic out now, we can just retaliate with a Twin Needle. And then a second Water Pulse from Starmie thankfully doesn't crit, so Logic survives with 2 HP and fires off another Twin Needle. We had a person berry attached in the event of confusion this time, but that ended up not being necessary. That's badge number two. From here, we need to fight our rival on the SS Anne, but he's not much harder than before, so I'll just skip it. Then I use my dirty, slimy, bug-catching hands to rub an old man's back until he gives me the HM for cut. Then Semantic evolves into Parasect, which is right in time to fight Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge can be difficult, but thankfully Semantic resists his electric-type attacks. We start with Syntax, though, as Surge leads with his Voltorb and then we put it to sleep. Syntax is kind of a one-trick pony. I switch to Logic next, but unfortunately Voltorb wakes up, only to miss a Sonic Boom. I go for a Focus Energy as Voltorb hits a very weak Shockwave. Then Twin Needle one-shots the Voltorb thanks to a critical hit. Pikachu is next, but it just takes one critical hit Twin Needle to finish that off. So last is Raichu. We are able to outspeed, but Twin Needle doesn't crit and does a little under half health. Then Raichu uses Thunder Wave to paralyze Logic. On the next turn, it hits a pretty strong shockwave, and then Twin Needle doesn't crit again, so Raichu survives in the red. So Surge heals with a Super Potion, as Logic somehow manages to not get paralyzed for the second turn in a row, and hits another Twin Needle. Though even with one critical hit, it's not enough to knock out Raichu. So I switch to Semantic as Raichu goes for a double team. Then it just uses Quick Attack, and Semantic finishes it off with a Secret Power, winning us a surprisingly easy third gym badge. After that, it's a pretty quick trip to Celadon City where Erica and her grass types are waiting. 
but Grass is like the only type that has a bad matchup against bug types in this game. Maybe the Psychic type too. Oh, and speaking of Psychic, I was able to get the TM for Psychic from Mr. Psychic in Saffron City, so Syntax just ravages all of Erica's Grass types with Psychic. We did manage to dodge a Stun Spore on Victory Bell, which would have made things a little bit harder, but all of our three bugs take so little damage from Grass type moves that this was never really going to be an issue. That's badge number four. At this point, the level cap skyrockets as the rest of Kanto opens up. I'm also able to get my last two team members. First, from Route 12, I catch a Venonat, though I do violate the old man's method by putting it to sleep first. I name Venonat Compile because compilation doesn't fit. Then I go to the Safari Zone, where I find a Scyther, and I manage to actually catch her, which is pretty cool, though it does take two balls. Then I make sure to max out her attack EVs against Wild Paris and Mount Moon, and I also give her enough speed EVs to outspeed Lance's Aerodactyl with the badge boost, which I'm pretty sure is the fastest Pokemon we'll have to face. I also train up Compile, making sure to delay her evolution until level 41 so that she learns Psychic before the level cap, but once she hits level 41, she evolves from a Hairy Plum into a beautiful, beautiful Venomoth. Venomoth has much better special attack than Butterfree, so Compile just absolutely devastates Koga with Psychic. Muck does hang on from a Psychic since its special defense is so high, but it just uses Acid Armor. So yeah, it's a clean sweep. Actually, Weezing just barely survives too, but it just can't hit us for much damage. So after a few turns of stalling with Hyper Potions, Compile has finished her sweep, and we've gotten the fifth gym badge. The sixth gym leader, Sabrina, has the same level cap as Koga, but before we can fight her, we have to clear out the Team Rocket infestation from Silvco. For whatever reason, our rival Birdman has decided to perch there as well, so we also have to take care of him. And his team is starting to become quite the problem, especially his stupid Pidgeot. We lead with Compile, who fires off a Psychic, which hits for about 50%. And then Pidgeot gets a frickin' critical hit with Wing Attack. Pidgeot also knows Quick Attack, so I have to switch out to Runtime, who does tank the hit, and then finishes off the Pidgeot with a Wing Attack. Next is Growlithe, but since it's just a Growlithe, I stay in and hit it with a Return, which does leave Growlithe with a Sliver thanks to its Intimidate. Then it retaliates with a Leer. Then on the next turn, I switch to Wing Attack to knock it out, since variety is the spice of life. Gyarados comes out next and gets off another Intimidate. But Gyarados has a really trash moveset for this fight, so I stay in and hit a soft return. Gyarados retaliates with a critical hit bite. I then stay in for one more return, and then Gyarados uses Dragon Rage. So now I gotta switch. I bring in Logic, who shrugs off a bite, and then two secret powers are enough to knock out Gyarados. Next is Alakazam, but thankfully Logic outspeeds and mows it down with a Twin Needle. So last is Venusaur, but Venusaur sucks, so we can just hit it with a Twin Needle. It puts Logic to sleep, so on the next turn I switch to Syntax, tank a cute Razor Leaf, and then knock out the Venusaur with Psychic. And that's the battle. After saving the President from Giovanni, he pays me off by giving me a Master Ball, which is completely useless at this point, but I appreciate the thought. As thanks, I blow a hole in his building with my Mushroom Zombie. Now it's time to face off against Sabrina. I'm not totally sure if Logic is fast enough to outspeed her Alakazam, but runtime definitely is, so after setting up a Swords Dance on her Kadabra, which just goes for Calm Mind, I devastate her entire team of Psychic types, and her Venomoth, for some reason, with Return. Man, if Venomoth was Psychic type and got Stab Psychic, this run would be so much easier. Not that it's been super hard until now, but that is about to change. Because next up is Blaine. Never did I think that I'd be able to find a challenge where this bald moron would be one of the hardest trainers to fight but bug types have a glaring weakness to being burned alive, something that they actually share with most living things. And since Blaine likes using Fire-type Pokémon, this is pretty scary. Fortunately, Blaine leads with a Growlithe, which is pretty terrible, making it somewhat safe to set up on. Unfortunately, it does no Fire Blast, so it can still do good damage to us. After brainstorming for a while, I come up with a plan that makes this potentially doable with a little bit of luck. I lead with Syntax, who as always hits her almost 100% accurate Sleep Powder, I've also taught her Rain Dance to set up the rain, which will let her survive even a critical hit Fire Blast from Growlithe. Then I start going for Flash, which lowers Growlithe's accuracy. Thanks to Compound Eyes, Flash has 91% accuracy, but Syntax still misses the first one. Fortunately, Growlithe just stays asleep. So we hit the next one, and then the pup continues to snooze. So I hit a second Flash, and then Growlithe wakes up, but misses a Fire Blast. So I put it back to sleep on the next turn. Rain expires, so I set it up again, and thankfully I do, because Growlithe wakes up and hits a Fire Blast. I put it back to sleep on the next turn, but now I'm dead to a critical hit Fire Blast here, so it's a little scary. I go for a few more flashes until the rain expires. Then I rain dance one more time, and Growlithe wakes up, missing a Fire Blast. 
so I put it to sleep one more time, and then I switch to run time. Then I set up a swords dance as Growlithe wakes up, but he misses another fire blast. So I set up another swords dance as Growlithe misses another fire blast, but now the rain ends. Fortunately though, Growlithe is now out of fire blast PP, so I go for a third swords dance as Growlithe misses a roar. From here, it's a sweep with return. We need all three swords dances here because Blaine's Arcanine has Intimidate, but plus five is enough to kill the Arcanine, winning us the seventh gym badge. Last up is our final fight against Giovanni, but Compile just eviscerates his entire team with a combination of Giga Drain and Psychic. Giovanni is definitely the most underwhelming final gym leader, though I guess Wolfric does give him a run for his money. Either way, that's all eight gym badges collected. So now all that's left is the Elite Four. We have one more fight with Birdman before getting to the Elite Four, but it's just a warm-up for what's to come, so I'm gonna skip it. After clearing through Victory Road and getting to the level cap of 60 to match Lance's Dragonite, here is our final team. Honestly, things have gone pretty smoothly so far. So, let's see if these creepy crawlies have what it takes to get to the end of the run. First up is Lorelei, the Ice-type trainer. Not ideal for our part flying and part grass type bugs, but Compile can handle most of her Pokemon without too much of a problem. Lorelei leads with Dugon, which does go down to two Miracle Seed boosted Giga Drains as she just wastes time using Safeguard. Slowbro comes out next, presumably because it thinks it has a super effective Psychic type move, but it doesn't, it just has Amnesia, which it does use after taking a huge chunk from Giga Drain. Unfortunately, Amnesia means that it will likely survive another Giga Drain with just a sliver. And then Lorelei will heal. I don't really have enough Giga Drain PP for that, so I decide to switch to Logic, who gets hit by a pretty hard Surf. But then a Twin Needle kills Slowbro. Next is Cloyster, so I switch back to Compile as Cloyster just tries to go for a Protect. Then a Giga Drain one-shots Cloyster on the next turn. And then fourth is Jinx, which is a bit of a problem. Jinx will likely go for Lovely Kiss here, which will put me to sleep. Ideally, I want to switch to Logic, but I mistakenly didn't give him a Chesto Berry. So if he switches in on a Lovely Kiss, that would be pretty bad, because then we don't have a great way to kill Jinx. So I decide to switch to Semantic, who does indeed fall asleep to a Lovely Kiss. This now gives me a switch to Logic, who will definitely tank an Ice Punch. Unless it crits. I'm sorry, Logic. May you rest in bees. Well, without Logic, our Alakazam answers aren't great, but that's not something I need to worry about until a little bit later. For now, I bring in Runtime and knock out the Jinx with a return, since it has such terrible defense. Then Lepra comes out. Lepra likes to use Confuse Ray, so I set up a Substitute, which works perfectly as it causes Confuse Ray to fail. So I'm able to get off a return for just a little bit of damage. But then Ice Beam breaks the sub. I go for another sub to see if she'll Confuse Ray again, but she doesn't. So on the next turn, I switch back to Compile, who does get hit hard by an Ice Beam. On the next turn, Compile hits a Giga Drain, leaving Lepra with a Sliver as she retaliates with a Surf. But thanks to Lepra's Citrus Berry, she comes out of healing range, so one final Giga Drain finishes her off, winning us the battle. That was a pretty rough start. Fortunately, next is Bruno, who sucks. Well, maybe sucks is a bit too harsh, since a critical hit here would still also be pretty bad. But he does lead with the weakest of his fighting types, an Onyx, which goes down to a Giga Drain from Compile. Then he brings out Hitmonchan, who just barely survives a Psychic. It retaliates with a Rock Tomb, but because of Compile's Shield Dust, our speed doesn't get lowered. So after Bruno heals, two more Psychics finish off the Hitmonchan. Next is Machamp. And a critical hit from Rock Slide will kill me here, but I don't want it to set up a bulk up for free, so I decide to stay in and hit a hard Psychic. Machamp then just goes for a Scary Face, as its Citrus Berry heals a bit of its HP. So on the next turn, I switch to Semantic. And then Machamp goes for Cross Chop, for whatever reason. So on the next turn, we Spore it. I go first because I'm holding a Quick Claw, which is actually kind of inconvenient since Machamp now takes his first turn of sleep. Thankfully though, Machamp stays asleep as I switch in runtime. So on the next turn, she finishes off Machamp with an Aerial Ace. Next is Hitmonlee, but it has terrible defense, so an Aerial Ace is more than enough for the one shot. And then last is Bruno's second Onyx, which doesn't have a rock move, so I switch to Compile, who shakes off a double edge. And then a Giga Drain finishes off the Onyx, winning us the battle. Next up, I have to beat an old lady with a stick. She leads with her first Gengar, but thanks to a held twisted spoon, Compile is able to outspeed and finish her off with a single Psychic before she sets up with Double Team. Psychics also destroy Agatha's Golbat and her Haunter, but her second Gengar is able to outspeed and hits a Hypnosis. Pretty lame to rely on sleep to eke out a win, Agatha. Well, I switch to Runtime, who tanks a Shadow Ball. I think maybe Agatha will go for Hypnosis here, so I set up a Substitute. But she just goes for another Shadow Ball. 
That was kind of dumb because now I'm at risk to a critical shadow ball, so I have to switch. So I switch out to Syntax. Okay, so now Gengar goes for Hypnosis, but thankfully it misses. I, however, do not miss my Sleep Powder on the next turn, and then two Psychics knock out the Gengar as it just stays asleep. Last is Arabok, and I'm not sure if a Psychic will kill, so I first put it to sleep with Hypnosis. I'm right about a Psychic not one-shotting, but Arabok just stays asleep, so after Agatha heals, two more Psychics finish off the Arabok, winning us the battle. Last for the Elite Four is Lance. He has a Rock Flying type Aerodactyl, which is pretty terrifying. Runtime has access to Steel Wing through TMs, but Steel Wing has 90% accuracy, so I'd really like to not have to rely on it if I don't have to. So instead, it's time to repeat the Blaine strat, this time against Lance's Gyarados. I start with a Sleep Powder, which thankfully hits. Then I start going for Flashes. Gyarados wakes up after a few turns and manages to connect with the Dragon Rage. So I just put it back to sleep, and then I switch to Semantic. On the next turn, Gyarados wakes up and hits another Dragon Rage as I hit another Flash. Then Gyarados misses a Dragon Rage as I put it to sleep with Spore. This lets me safely switch to Runtime as Gyarados takes its first turn of sleep. Then I set up a Substitute, and Gyarados wakes up, but he misses a Dragon Rage. So I Sword Stance behind my sub as Gyarados misses another Dragon Rage. And then it's another Sword Stance as Gyarados connects with a Bite. But the Bite is not enough to break my sub. So it's just one more Sword Stance as Gyarados misses another Bite. And from here, it's a sweep with Return. We actually don't need the Substitute intact here because Returns are able to one-shot every single one of Lance's Pokémon, even his Rock-type Aerodactyl, but it is nice to have just in case. I think the natures of Trainer Pokémon are random in this game, so it is possible that a plus defense nature on Aerodactyl might be able to survive, since I calced it assuming neutral natures. Either way, it works out. That's Lance defeated. But now it's time for the hardest fight of the run, the final fight against rival Birdman. He has a Pidgeot, an Alakazam, a Rhydon, and an Arcanine, all of which hit our Pokémon for super effective damage. Without logic, Alakazam is pretty tough for us to deal with, and to beat Rhydon, I need to use Giga Drain from Compile or Semantic, and to beat Arcanine, I'll likely need to set up with Runtime. This is all really tricky, and the only way I can think of doing it requires a good amount of luck. But Lucky Plays did get us through Blaine, and Lance, and a few other fights, so maybe it'll be enough here. I start by leading Syntax to do what she does best. She puts Pidgeot to sleep with a Sleep Powder. Then she hits a Soft Psychic, which luckily gets a special defense drop. But then Pidgeot wakes up and hits a Sand Attack. Yikes. Well, not much to do, but hope a Sleep Powder hits anyways. Thankfully it does, and then I switch to Compile to shake off the Accuracy drop. And then I switch back to Syntax, but Pidgeot wakes up, only to hit a Feather Dance. Well, whatever, I put the Pidgeot back to sleep, and then I hit another Psychic, which crits. That was absolutely huge. Good job, Syntax. So far, luck is on our side. Rhydon comes out next, so I put it to sleep with Sleep Powder. And then I switch to Semantic, but Rhydon gets a one-turn sleep and hits a Rock Tomb, which isn't enough to kill, but the speed drop means we definitely aren't outspeeding. So unless Quick Claw activates here, we're not going to be able to get off a Giga Drain. And Quick Claw chooses to of course not activate, so Semantic unfortunately goes down. Rest well, little one. I guess luck is no longer on our side. I have no choice here but to bring out Compile next, because I have to be able to one-shot this Rhydon. Unfortunately, because of Compile's poison type, this brings out Alakazam instead of Arcanine, which was the Pokémon I was anticipating. Since Alakazam comes out, there's nothing to do but let Compile go down to safely bring in Runtime. And then there were two. Runtime comes in and is able to outspeed the Alakazam, but she just barely is unable to one-shot the Alakazam with Return so Alakazam fires off a very hard Psychic. But now Birdman will heal here. According to my calculations, Return has a 25% chance to kill Alakazam, so I decide to set up a Substitute as Alakazam heals. If I can kill Alakazam with a Substitute up, I might be able to beat the Arcanine that comes in next because Intimidate won't work when I'm behind a Substitute. So I go for another Return, but it's not enough. Psychic breaks our sub. I've got one more chance to set up a sub as Alakazam heals. And then on the next turn, I click return one last time. And once again, we come up short. So Alakazam breaks our sub with a Psychic. So I just kill it with another return, and then Arcanine comes out. I have exactly one more chance left. I switch to Syntax as Arcanine goes for extreme speed. Then I go for Sleep Powder. If Arcanine stays asleep for a few turns here, Runtime can still eke out a win. But Arcanine just wakes up instantly and kills Runtime with a flamethrower. Well, that's a wipe. 
Even if Syntax gets incredible sleep luck, she only has 3 psychic PP, so there's no way that she wins this fight. Not that it even matters, because Arcanine just instantly wakes up again and torches our last living bug. Well, at this point, I have a difficult decision to make. I could restart the run, go through the entire game again with only minor differences in the Pokémon I catch, hopefully come up with a better strategy, and try the final fight again, amounting to several several more hours of gameplay for approximately 5 more minutes of footage. Or, since I saved before the champion fight, I could just load my save file, try the fight again, end this playthrough with about 10 more minutes of gameplay, and proceed to make the video anyways. I thought long and hard about this decision. For about 30 seconds, until I realized that I'd feel incredibly unsatisfied unless I actually legitimately completed this run from start to finish. Some might call it an unhealthy obsession with striving for perfection fueled by two decades of going through an academic system that pits individuals against one another leading to deep-seated insecurities about their own comparative self-worth no matter what level of success they achieve, but I call it determination. Well, 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 back to square one. There's really nothing notably different between this attempt and attempt two, until I get to the Elite Four, other than the fact that the Scyther I find in the Safari Zone runs away. So instead, I have to spend nearly all of my hard-earned money to buy a Scyther from the Celadon City game corner. Oh, and almost all of my bugs are marginally worse in this attempt. Runtime the Scyther has less attack, and Compile the Venomoth actually has an adamant nature, so even with maxing out his special attack EVs, he has less special attack. Let's see if this new team has what it takes. First up is Lorelei. The goal here is to not lose a Pokémon to her. Thankfully, Giga Drain from Compile is still just barely a two-shot, though Dugon chooses to set up Hail instead of Safeguard this time. This actually kind of works out, because Slowbro now takes Chip when she comes out. She also chooses to go for Surf instead of Amnesia, so two Giga Drains are enough to finish her off, meaning that Logic is chilling in the back at full HP. Cloyster comes out third, and a Giga Drain is still enough for the kill, which gets Compile back to almost full HP. Fourth is Jinx, and so now we switch to Logic, who does have a Chesto Berry. But Jinx just goes for Attract, which Logic is actually immune to, so a Twin Needle knocks out the Creepy Kisser. And then last is Leprong. Logic survives even a crit, so I stay in to hit a Twin Needle, which doesn't do much damage, but that's okay. Leprong just hits a Confuse Ray, so I switch to Compile, who tanks a Body Slam, which thankfully doesn't paralyze, because that would have been bad. Giga Drain gets us back to almost full HP as Leprong hits a Surf. The play here is to go for a Psychic to prevent Leprong from falling into the red, but I do make the mistake of going for Giga Drain which sucks because Lorelei now heals. I go for a Psychic hoping for a special defense drop, but I don't get it. Then I have to use my last Giga Drain PP to bring Lepra into the yellow as I tank another Ice Beam. So from here, I actually have to switch to Logic and risk another Ice Beam crit, but Logic is able to tank it. So then I hit Lepra with a double edge, which is just enough to knock her out, winning us the battle. That was almost bad again, but we managed to clutch it out. Next is Bruno, Agatha, and Lance, but they're all taken care of in more or less the same way as before, so we can just go ahead and skip past those. But it does help Compile level up to level 63 by the time we get to our final fight with Birdman. So we lead our powerhouse, but unfortunately Pidgeot is still pretty bulky, so it still doesn't take too much damage from a Psychic despite the level advantage. Pidgeot hits back with an Aerial Ace, but thankfully doesn't crit. And then our Citrus Berry activates, so we will survive another non-critical hit Aerial Ace. So I go for another Psychic, and then Compile hangs on from an Aerial Ace with 10 HP. Amazing. Unfortunately, Compile is just strong enough to put Pidgeot into healing range, so Birdman heals, meaning Compile is pretty much screwed. I kinda need to just let him go down here. So Compile hits a Psychic, and then Pidgeot finishes off our Mighty Moth. Rest well. This does let me bring out Logic though, who finishes off Pidgeot with a Double Edge. And then Alakazam comes out, so Logic is able to just outspeed it and knock it out with a Twin Needle. And then Arcanine comes out, which is not what I was expecting. I thought for sure Rhydon would come out next, but I guess not. This is bad because I was planning on setting up with runtime against Arcanine a la the Blaine strategy after we finished off Rhydon with Giga Drain. But now, even at plus six, Scyther can't kill Rhydon in one shot. So it means we have to beat this Arcanine with a sub up so that a Rock Tomb from Rhydon doesn't kill Runtime. The first step is to just let Logic go down, but she does go out in a blaze of glory by firing off a Hyper Beam. Intimidate means that it doesn't do much, but Hyper Beaming with a giant bee is still pretty badass in my books. Rest well, little lady. Okay, next is Syntax, who needs to be a lot luckier than Attempt 2 Syntax. Fortunately, I did give her an extra tool here. 
First, she uses Sleep Powder to put Arcanine to sleep. Then she sets up a Rain Dance. Thankfully, Arcanine stays asleep. So then she just uses a Tract. I'm banking on the power of love for this one. I miss a Flash on the next turn, classic, and then Arcanine wakes up, but he's infatuated. So from here, I keep Arcanine asleep and the Rain set up as I try to hit Flashes. The timing works out relatively well, but there are a few close calls. The Arcanine is able to get off a flamethrower at one point, though it's in the rain and it thankfully doesn't crit, so we survive. And admittedly, we are getting super lucky that Sleep Powder isn't missing at all. After I get all six flashes off and manage to get Arcanine in a position where it's asleep and the rain is up, I switch to runtime. And then Arcanine immediately wakes up and hits a flamethrower. That's bad, but at least Citrus Berry activates to gain us some HP back. So next, I switch back to Syntax, hoping for a better setup. First, it's a Sleep Powder. Then I switch back to Runtime as Arcanine thankfully sleeps. And now here's the tricky part. We need three Sword Stances and a Substitute. I start with the Substitute as Arcanine sleeps again. Then I go for a Sword Stance, more sleeping. One more Sword Stance and Arcanine wakes up, but it misses a Flamethrower. So I go for one last Sword Stance, and then Arcanine breaks my sub with a Flamethrower. Remember, because of Rhydon, I need a sub up. So if Arcanine breaks my next sub, I'm gonna lose. But thankfully, Arcanine misses the flamethrower. With that, we're all good. Though I do get quite the scare by Arcanine going for extreme speed on the next turn, which thankfully also misses. That would have really sucked. After Arcanine goes down, Rhydon comes out. So we hit it with a return, which does a good chunk of damage, and then Rock Tomb breaks runtime sub. But after that, another return finishes off Rhydon. So, all that's left is Venusaur, which goes down to another return, and then Gyarados, which even after an Intimidate, also goes down to one last return, winning us the battle, and the run. That was quite the challenge. In a way, the run was really difficult, because of how weak and unversatile our team of bugs was. But the difficulty forced me to over-rely on sleep, and halfway decent luck made it quite a bit easier than I was expecting. And it really did make me realize how much easier Fire Red and Leaf Green are when compared to some of the other games in the franchise. I'd be interested in trying another bug lock in a later generation where they have a bit more resources. Let me know what you think would be a good one to try. Until then, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe. Or don't. I, I don't know. But I do know that you should follow me on Twitter and Twitch to keep up with streams of my future challenges. And you should subscribe to Flygon HG Highlights. It's my new highlights channel that edits my streams into 30-ish minute long videos that come out about twice a week. So there's a lot more Flygon HG content out there for those who want it. And be sure to join the Flygon HG community discord where you can discuss nuzlocking and make recommendations for future challenges. Stay tuned for more nuzlock videos, and until then, remember to always, always, always play around the critical hit.